Welcome everyone and uh, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you will be notified when we'll be uploading videos like this. We actually up upload videos which are related to anything about education and management, including of course uh, statistics and research. Now in this particular video, I'll be sharing to you on how to perform a measurement of central tendency and standard deviation using Microsoft Excel. Now this is a pretty basic and uh, uh, easy process, but of course, if you want to make it more easier, of course you can calculate manually on how to uh, uh, how to get to the measures of central tendency and determine the standard deviation of a particular data set but uh, there is also a strategy of which uh, you do not have to uh, do it manually and use the technology that is available to us and it is as simple as a few clicks and you're already about done about it right so here we go we we will measure the central tendency of an example data set that is displayed in your screen this is um, a level of satisfaction of a particular uh, restaurant whatsoever is that now you ask your respondents with uh, 10 questions that is answerable by one to ten on a rank all right let's say for example uh, how is the food you rank one to ten based on your uh, feeling and experience so on and so forth then and based on that we gathered 20 respondents right and the respondents actually responded these particular numbers in in this uh, data set now what we're going to do is to determine the central tendency now the purpose of measuring the central tendency is to determine the midpoint all right the midpoint of the responses that uh, our uh, our respondent our, our respondents actually answered in these particular questions so that we'll be able to determine whether or not uh, they are satisfied in the specific items that we ask them to to rate and then we also have standard deviation the purpose of standard deviation is to determine whether or not our data is dispersed from the mean meaning what is the the dispersion of the data right how close clustered or how sporadic is the data based on the responses of our customers are our customers more unanimous or they are you know responding the questions randomly based on their feelings and emotion as they experience the the uh, service in a particular restaurant or in a particular company now standard deviation would uh, tell us that uh, whether or not our customers are unanimous in one thing or they are disagreeing at some point on the other and all right so this is the formula for standard deviation of course uh, if you don't like mathematics you might be uh, struck with uh, fear and you know it's quite uh intimidating but you know that's a that's a very simple uh, formula of a uh, standard division and by the way this is the uh, standard division whether or not it is a close um clo uh, whether or not the data are close to the to the mean or whether or not the data are are spread away from the mean or there is at some point no uh, unanimity of a particular uh, response from the respondents based on the data that we actually have gathered now how to perform the measure of standard uh, i mean me measure of central tendency first we have to determine what are those measurements we have the mean the median and the mode now, if you're going to calculate it manually, of course, this will take you quite a lot of time because 
you have to add up manually so on and divide by the number but here you just have to type several formula and mean is simply the average right the average of the the entire responses so we type equals average right and then we just select eight to two from the 20 respondents and hit enter and that is our average of course you can do that also in this in this one average and then select the responses and hit enter but of course there is a better way to do that and that is to click on the on the cell and make sure that you point into the small green icon and no, a green square on the bottom right side of the of the cell and then hold on to that and drag up to the last part of the data set and then unclick right so there you go that is our mean or the average of the uh, responses of our respondents our customers then median how do we get the median of course uh, in uh, in manual calculation you have to arrange it um, in in order and then you find the middle by counting each of the items in it's quite uh, you know tiring but here you just uh, hit on equals and then median median and then you have to select all and be careful not to select mean because that's a different uh, item and there you go that's the that's the median so that's the median right there and just uh, put the formula and drag it all over and you get the the median and then we have the mode by the way the mode is simply the most uh, occurring item or response in the data set so similar with mean and median right and then we go we are going to select this data set and then there you go uh -huh. so what can we get out of this uh, particular a particular treatment of, of the measures of central tendency that the average in question one is a 4.4 the median is a 3.5 but the mode the most occurring response is uh, two probably if uh, highly satisfied is at uh, 10 and probably not satisfied at all is one if you are uh, measuring based on mode i think you are pretty far from uh, uh, your customers being satisfied in question number one then we have standard deviation it's a uh, quite simple you just uh, hit equals and then s t d e d a that is the standard deviation for a sample of a population right now same we just uh, uh, highlight on that and then press enter and then click on the green square and then drag it all throughout the entire data set and there you go you had you have a standard deviation now, when we speak of standard deviation, it simply means the clustering of the data responses based on the data set that were actually gathered from our respondents in this particular example. So when it is closer to one, right, when it is closer to one, it means that the data are closely clustered. When it is farther away from one, 
it means that the data are dispersed, meaning there is a greater tendency of randomness in a particular data set. When it is closer to one, meaning there is almost of a unanimity out of uh, the responses. All right, I hope that you learned something. That is it for now. Just wait for other videos that will be, that will be uploaded. Thank you very much.